Tucked away in a valley in Jordan is one of the wonders of the world. Carved into a mountainside, Petra has survived for two and a half thousand years. Its popularity soared off the back of the Indiana Jones movies. But the Rose City has become too popular for its own good, and archaeologists fear it will be lost forever. Luckily, there's a Jordanian princess who's making it her life's work to save Petra. Before anyone even sets foot in Petra, they have to navigate the sick. Um, sort of carvings. An ominous and imposing kilometre-long chasm of rock which guards the entrance to this precious place. Well, for years and years, nobody could get here. I'm privileged to have as my guide a member of Jordan's first family, Her Royal Highness Princess Dana Faras. Myth has it Moses created with a, um, a hit of his stick. So. But as breathtaking as the sick is, it's merely the starter in this visual feast. And it's not long before the main course comes into view. Does it still take your breath away? Every single time, and it's just absolutely magnificent. <laughs> Welcome to the fabled city of Petra, where ancient Arab traders, the Nabataeans, turned mountains into massive monuments. But that was all about catching the eye, wasn't it? As yes. you walk in, you just, look at Absolutely. So I mean, it, it's really all about impact. And <laughs> <laughs> The first thing you see is the city's most iconic symbol, al Kazna, the treasury. Like most of this extraordinary place, it's carved out of a single block of stone. It's very important to understand that for a poor country like Jordan, places like Petra are really our treasures. They are, they are our oil, if you will. The riches of Petra go far beyond the treasury. A walk through these ancient streets reveals exquisitely crafted royal tombs, temples, and the ruins of once grand old palaces. A magical oasis in the searing desert. So this large area here is a paradise. It's a garden and pool complex that had an Olympic-sized swimming pool in the back there with an island in the middle of it that had a pavilion on it where you could sit and, and relax in the shade. And like Princess Dana, archaeologist Chris Tuttle yeah. loves Petra. Uh, with shops inside the colonnades. He's lived and worked here for a decade. And his knowledge of the Nabataeans brings this place to life. I mean, the reason Petra is here is because of wealth. What is the source of this wealth? It's luxury goods. And the Nabataeans controlled all of that, so the money's just pouring into the city. Now it's tourists pouring into the city. Thousands every day making their pilgrimage to Petra. Retracing the steps of the ancient camel caravans. <laughs> It's impossible not to be awestruck by Petra, by its breathtaking natural beauty, and by what the ancient people painstakingly built here more than 2,000 years ago. This place was made to impress back then, and it continues to do so now almost too well, with hundreds of thousands of visitors each year trampling and scrambling all over it. They're destroying the very place they've come to see. Quite seriously, Petra is being loved to death. The human impact on Petra is one of the major um, impacts on the site. And there are more people going through the site than ever before. And they leave, they leave a footprint. It was Hollywood that put Petra on the world stage. As a backdrop in this 1989 Indiana Jones film. Within a decade, tourist numbers had risen tenfold and crowd control became almost unmanageable. 
Now, with their walking stocks and access all areas approach, visitors are unwittingly destroying two and a half thousand years of history. Is part of the problem not fully valuing this place, seeing an economic value, but not a heritage value? Yes, but you know, this conflict is, exists in almost every single major tourist site throughout the world. Absolutely, but right now there are people who say lock up Petra, don't let people in, and others who say we need the tourism dollars. And yes, and absolutely. It's both are true, aren't they? Both are absolutely true, and it's again, it's this whole idea of, of balance. What's out of balance is when you see modern bad habits in these ancient caves. Again, this would have looked beautiful. Very, and here we've got some of the elephants from the, the uh, original columns. And over at the Great Temple, once the centerpiece of Petra, Chris Tuttle's showing me more senseless destruction. It was definitely an act of intentional vandalism. Like, let me show you. Um, right here, I mean, these stones are lying right here. You can see. A few place. days ago, a visiting vandal with an accurate throwing arm took a few seconds to destroy some of the ornate figures on these columns. You must really get annoyed with tourists some days. The, the human factor is a factor in preserving these sites. If people don't understand why this stuff is important, it makes it easier for them to not take active steps to protect it. Incredibly, up until just a few years ago, the local Bedouin people still lived in many of these mountain caves. But when UNESCO announced Petra as a World Heritage Site, they were moved out. Apart from their small souvenir stalls, their economic and physical connection with their land was lost. You're just fixing a crack there? Yes. But we must get them re-engaged with the site in a way that allows them to help us protect and preserve it. So without their help, can you possibly save it? No, in my opinion, no. In the, in the long, long term, I think without the involvement of the local community, it is not sustainable. Mm -hmm. It's probably best to come up this way. Okay. So Tara, this is the Bioclinium. And it's really special for Petra and for this region because there's nothing like it in the world at all. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful, isn't it? Cupids and flowering vines. It's a priceless window into the lives of the prosperous Nabataeans. The only surviving wall painting in all of Petra. Different images. For Angela Fitzgerald from country Victoria, history doesn't get any better or more important than this. You're now seeing Petra firsthand and, and understanding how very fragile it is. What's it like to see it being mismanaged, misused, neglected and vandalised? Oh, it's, I guess it's kind of heartbreaking at times to see bad practices happening, but I do feel like we can make a change. There you go. Thank you. You're very welcome. Angela is here as a volunteer with the Petra Junior Rangers. Welcome. Local kids who are learning the cultural significance of Petra and the importance of protecting it. With the money. The young saving the old. We try and show that if you don't look after Petra now, in the future, who knows what will happen and maybe, you know, people won't want to come here. In its heyday, 30,000 people called Petra home. But then the city kind of rolls out to the north and south in a series of suburbs. And for about 400 years, it was considered the most civilised address in the world. So ancient suburban sprawl. <laughs> Absolutely, suburban sprawl. That any of it is left today is most likely because it's been so well hidden. And how long before you know? In fact, archaeologists have barely scratched the surface. The city centre, which is about six square kilometres, all the stuff that we've seen today, we've excavated less than 
less than 1%. Exactly. There is several lifetimes of work for many people left to do here. But in, before we can do that, we have to solve this mystery of Petra, uh, the mystery of how to preserve it for the future. For now, it's probably good Petra remains buried. It buys Dana Faras and her conservation group, the Petra National Trust, valuable time. A lot of it is, is visitor safety as well. But like the new breed of modern royals all over the world, this is a can-do princess. And she's determined to save this great city. Do you find, because you are a member of the royal family, that there is this expectation that you do have all the solutions? And, and if you don't, you can ring up the king and he'll solve the problem for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it had been that easy, it, we would have solved it a, a very long time ago. You know, it's, we are a working royal family and we do what we can to advocate and, and you know, to move in the right direction. But there really is no magic wand. This is really a national effort. If Petra is lost, what has the world lost? Well, quite a lot, I believe. I mean, the important thing is to recognize that you know, the value of Petra lies in that it is a symbol, a tangible symbol of civilizations, ancient and modern, um, that have con gone through this region. And there will be many, many more after us that will leave their mark as well. So we should just leave a soft mark if we can. Yes, or no mark at all. <laughs> <laughs>